Well, hello everyone and welcome. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thanks for tuning in today. Um, today is kind of a combination day. <laughs> combination day. Uh, two things. One, I have a bunch of stuff from a thrift flip that I have to turn around and get out into the shop because it's starting to pile up. You can kind of see all my stuff piling up back here. So I need to clear out some space. I need to get some of this done. And I thought it was the perfect time to really put some of the new um, all-in-one paint, the DIY cottage colors, to the test. So if you caught uh, my earlier video, I've tried it once with the shutter shelf redo that I did and uh, loved the result. But what I want to do is try it on a mess of different projects. So I have items that were going to like glass and ceramic and I've got metal and wood. I mean, we're going to we're going to put it on everything. I want to see how it does. I want to try um stenciling with it. I want to try transfers and want to see how it works with molds. So, we're going to combine the thrift flip with using all that combination of products with the new cottage colors from DIY. So these are all in one paints. They are water-based. They are the same great, great quality, but it's a different formula obviously than the normal clay-based paint. This has got a built-in top coat. So it does mean, you know, when I go to stencil on something, I don't have to seal over it. It's already sealed. So, bonus um and again i'm thinking transfers should go on like a dream because they love a finished surface and this surface would be finished so you know we're just going to test it out on everything to get an idea of how it works how it looks um whether i love it whether i don't you know important if i'm carrying it here and as well important for my customers coming in that are asking me, how does it work on, you know, glass and how does it work with transfers and is there a problem with painting over molds and I need to try it. So I'm taking you along with me. So I've got a number of different things lined up around me and I'm just looking at what needs to happen first. Now, I have this old really ratty beat up um, find. I, I actually, this is from a gentleman that I've met when I was thrifting and he's been hitting some garage sales and picking up stuff and meeting me in the thrifting parking lot with it. Hey, can you use this? Can you use that? So lovely. Larry, I love you. Um, because I don't have time to go to garage sales. So he found this little sign and he had thought, Look, it's really, I'm taking all these little vines off of this, right? So, yeesh. Um, he thought it was cute, maybe something that I could do something with, but he acknowledges it's old, it's broken, it's beat up, it's tired, but he's, like me, a big advocate of, it's wood, don't throw it out. Now, what I did do off camera was this was a little wobbly and I just stuck a couple of other little nails in it, right? Just to help it out. Now, the big problem is this big crack here. And this isn't something really that wood glue is going to work well with because it's, it's too bowed out. Let's try and patch it up with a bit of wood filler. And, and again, I'm not looking at this having to be super sturdy because it's really just a decorative little piece. So I'm just looking to make sure that this becomes, um, you know, a little bit more seamless looking once it's painted. And so, plus, let's face it, this is not an expensive piece, right? So this, this isn't something that you want to spend a lot of time repairing. We're going to clean it up and it's going to look cuter, but I'm not going to be selling it for a fortune in the shop, right? So there's always a balance between um, what you could do to something 
to fix it and whether you should do that thing to something to fix it. You know, so it's, it's always a case of, you know, you could fix something, um, but if it's gonna cost you $20 and the item that you're fixing is gonna sell for 14, then you're not fixing it, right? That there's, there's no point in doing that. There's no value to you in doing that. I'm just gonna get that ready for painting and put it off to the side to dry while I move on to a couple of other projects in the meantime. Now, what I do wanna do is get some of the prep work, like with that little birdhouse decorative thing, done and out of the way before I start painting. So that when I sit down and I start painting, I can just paint a whack of stuff, especially if they're the same color. So what I do have are these two little wooden canisters. Now, not particularly cute, definitely a little bit dated, but they do have like the plastic inserts in them and they are in, and they've got little rubber around it. So they are really practical and the wood is in great shape. So we're gonna just make them cute. I love the little village market mold from IOD that just came out. So we're gonna use it again. I know I just used this, guys, but come on, it's so stinking cute. So what I am gonna do is use the sheep and the pig, because I don't have a bigger one for the cow, so he's, we're just not using him right now. He's, he's just gonna, we're just going to ignore him for a second. And what I wanna do is I wanna get the stuff that I would like to, have drying, right? We've got our wood filler drying, and now we're gonna do these two molds, and we're gonna get them drying. Don't forget the little pig's tail because it's kind of curly and that misses out. So all that I'm looking at doing is taking my air dry clay. So I just brushed in some cornstarch into the two of those molds that I'm going to be using. And what I'm going to do is push my IOD air dried clay into the molds and <laughs> I forgot to bring my wood glue over and then glue them on here. I'm just gonna glue them on flat, leave them to dry overnight so that they are nice and adhered so that I can start painting and I can do it over top. But um, man, I, I love these little farm guys and I think they're gonna be super cute on, on something like this. So. We're going with them again. To get these to release, once we've got all the clay in, just flip them over. Now, with the animals, the more delicate parts on these are obviously the little legs. So it's easier to release them here, like from the, oh, he just wants to pop right out, doesn't he? And just kind of tease out the rest of the body so that you don't lose any of the legs. And with the pig, You've also got the little tail. So just kind of make sure you get him. On the cow, you also have his tail, which is kind of thin. And there we go. Okay, so let's flip them over. And we are going to Take some glue. Now you can use, you could use construction adhesive. You can use wood glue. I've got a wood glue here. You could use E6000. You could use a white craft glue. So don't kind of go nuts with having to buy something special. It's really just a function of where you're attaching it. If I'm attaching it onto furniture, then I tend to um, go for a stronger glue because I'm usually putting it on a vertical surface, in which case I'll put some uh, painter's tape across to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't slip down from where I want it to be. Um, but I'm going to put this on a flat surface, so, you know, anything is really going to hold it in place. You just want to make sure, I like getting glue all over. I don't like to have too much. I don't want it to squirt out when I attach it but I do like to get it right out to all of the edges. Any air dry clay 
shrinks slightly. The amount that it shrinks is really dependent upon the clay. Some are better than others. Um, the IOD air dry clay shrinks some of the least that I found were some of the other clays that I've that I've used, some of the other paper clays that I've used. Um, but there is some, some shrinkage that occurs. So if you don't have the glue out to all the edges, as it dries, those edges will kind of raise up off of your surface. In order to keep them down flat, get the glue right out to those edges and you'll be fine. Okay? So I'm going to, oh, and it just fits. Perfect, edge to edge. It's like it was meant to be. I'm gonna shift him over slightly so he doesn't have any, any overhang with the butt. <laughs> He's all stuck, stuck in place. And look at how cute that's going to be. I mean, come on. They were just begging. They were, I had these weeding, didn't even know that I was gonna be having um, these animals for the longest time. Um, but I mean, it's just calling for these guys. So I'm going to do the same thing with the pig, put it off to the side to dry until tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll be able to start doing a lot of our painting and stenciling and all the fun stuff. We are going to start painting. So a couple of things. Um, when I've got projects lined up like this, where I've got kind of the thrift haul going, I like to, and let me just grab the right color here. I like to kind of get them lined up so that I can paint the same colors at the same time. And really, that's the best way to go because you're not constantly um, cleaning brushes, um, opening cans, closing cans. It just speeds the process along. So this particular color from, um, let me grab a from the cottage colors line is called gray skies so of all of the colors this is the darkest it's not crazy dark but it is the darkest and so we are going to do a couple of things with this one Just kind of mixing it up, it had sort of settled a little bit, and that's typical for um, most normal kind of paints. I mean, that for this, it's going to be normal because it's got that top coat in it. So you want to make sure that it's all stirred in really well, that you're not dealing with a really weak layer at the top that's got more of the sealer that's just kind of risen to the top. And that's a little bit different than the DIY normal kind of clay-based paint, which really never separates. I mean, it, you just open and use it. And you're just looking for any of the streaks to dissipate. So you're looking for this being just a nice, even uh, looking consistency more than anything else. So. The first thing that I want to paint in the gray is this. Ultimately, I'm gonna to wanna to paint it white, but the difference with this paint, because it has the built-in sealer to it, is the distressing. And I want to play with the distressing more in terms of timing, because this paint really dries kind of rock hard. Um, you can't do any wet distressing once it's dry. It's not going to reactivate, it's already sealed. If you sand it, so if you dry sand it to distress once it is hardened as well, then you are breaking the seal, which means that wherever you sand, you have to reseal, otherwise, again, you've kind of compromised that seal. So one of the things that you can do, so if I was to paint this white and then just distress it back to the brown, I would need to reseal the piece. And that's okay, that's perfectly fine to do. But one of the things that I wanted to play with was using this paint, so using first the gray as a base coat. 
okay, that's a really lovely gray. Um, so we're going to use this as the base and distress back to it. Now here's one trick that I have used often. I have often taken an all-in-one paint, used it as my base coat, and then used a chalk type or a clay-based paint um, as my next coat. And I can sand that, wet sand, dry sand, whatever way I want, and it will not go down through this coat. This dries like rock hard. So it's a great way to mix with some of your other paints if you wanted to really do a lot of distressing that never got down to the wood, that you always wanted it to get down to a color. So this one, I am just gonna paint the entire piece in the gray, let it dry, and then we will coat over top of it. Now, I'm gonna use this brush again in just a minute, but while I'm using my stencil brush, since I just got it wet, um, I'm going to seal it up. Now, the one thing about these all-in-one paints is because they dry super hard, you do not want your paintbrush to dry out before you wash it out because, because um, it's gonna be dry and crusty. So I like to wrap it in a little bit of a wet towel. I used a, a wet wipe, but you could use a, a damp paper towel. And then I'm gonna wrap it in plastic so that again, it's gonna stay nice and moist before I go to use it again, but also um, while I'm waiting to do other stuff. So this piece, what I'm looking at doing is I have these big canisters and um, I just got paint on the lid. So let me get that off. So again, you get paint on the lid or anything, just take it off while it's wet. Cleans off fine. And what I wanna do is in the gray, I wanna stencil on a big stencil on the side of these two containers. And I'm gonna use, just gonna put this on the side and I'm like, oh, gonna be a mess. Okay, since I got gray paint all over the place, all right, safe to put on the side. So I want to stencil on, and what I have is a new pack of the Parfumery um, stencils by Jamie Ray Vintage. So they're nice and large, and um, I'm thinking I might be able to get away with two different ones. That's gonna work great. All right, so stenciling on a curved surface is not always the easiest thing to do, um, only because of the curve. This one is no exception because it has this medallion in the center of, uh, you're, you're not gonna be able to see. Anyway, there's a little medallion in the center that kind of pops up. So I'm gonna have to use my fingers to hold that down when I stencil in that area. Okay, anybody else challenged to find the end of tapes? So, what I'm going to do is find where I want to put it down, and I'm going to tape it in place. So it's going to leave my hands free to be able to hold down in the sections that are rising up and hopefully be able to get a crisper image. The nice thing about stenciling on here using the all-in-one is that it is then automatically sealed. So we've got our, our paint and it's going to be on there. So I'm dipping into my gray skies and then I am on my paper board, I am offloading tons of my paint so that I don't have more than I need. Okay, 
moment of truth. And there you go. It's going to be hard for you to see. Nice soft image. Lovely. So I'm going to do the other one in a contrasting stencil. And I'm going to wash these stencils off right away just to make sure that, again, the paint doesn't dry on there and I'm able to get that off. I have my stencils and my stencil brush washed out and over to the side drying. Now, here's the thing. With the all-in-one paint, if you did not clean your stencils, then... The stencil would be fine in, in so much as um, the paint won't reactivate when you go to use it. But what it does do is, is it, it's kind of um, settled in around the rim of all of the details of your stencil. So you're, in essence, that image has become minutely smaller and, and each subsequent layer um, becomes less defined and less defined. And so cleaning the stencils just increases the life of your stencil um, because then you don't have to repurchase that one down the road when you can't make out any of the details. That's in particularly important on ones like the label stencils that have a lot of little printing because that would be the first that your letters just become really indistinct. Right, does that make sense? So the next thing that I have is I have a set of three candlesticks um, and I want to paint these three gray. So I'm going to take my gray skies and I am going to paint it down into all of those details on each of these three candlesticks. and make them, change them over from this. And this has got like ceramic here and it's got like the slick kind of gold, um, it's not metal, it seems more like it's maybe resin. So we've got ceramic and resin that we're coating in the paint. And um, right now, it's going on extremely smoothly. You know, when I look at this little box off to the side, that, well, quite honestly, that's just one coat coverage on that. So I get that it's not my final coat, but that gray seems to be doing a really good job about going on and um, covering that up. Even though that was kind of that dark orangey kind of colored wood, it really went on nicely. So I'm going to get all three of these candlesticks, and they're kind of the graduated sizes, right? So we've got the medium and then the small. So I'm gonna get those three all covered in the gray as well. And then we're gonna come back and flip to our next color. other thing that I definitely want to have painted white is this. Now, not the cloche, <laughs> but this base. I want to do a little bit of um, transfers on this. I want to try the transfers onto the, the finished paint. So I just want to have it kind of a nice, bright, clean look. I'm going to paint the base in white. Now, our two little canisters with our little farm animals that we did. Um, we're gonna paint these in paint blue. So this is the uh, beautiful pale blue color that's part of the cottage color line. And it's just a, a lovely kind of soft, bluey, kind of like a little bit of tones of green in there. It's just a really nice, soft color. So we're going to paint both of these animals and everything in two coats of this paint blue color. So 
So it's nice and soft blue. And we just wanna make sure that we get that color up into all of the edging and all of the details of those animals. The rest, dead easy because it's just straight paint job. But we'll definitely want two coats of this. In addition to the blue pots, um, the canisters, I want to paint this ceramic cow in the blue as well. So see how going on to a really slick surface like this is going to work for the paint. And this, of course, will take two coats. I would say, of course, and I would say at least, just because your first, you know, expect that with any paint going over ceramic, that your first coat is gonna go on kind of streaky, right? That's just to be expected of um, any paint. Your second coat should now that it's got paint there to adhere to better, should be able to go on much smoother, much thicker, and uh, eliminate the streakiness. But again, fairly pale color going over um, this darker color. I'm not sure how two coats are gonna do and whether or not I would need more. Ow, that's hurting my fingers on the bottom holding it. He's pretty heavy, this guy. So. What I do have is this kind of cute little um, paper towel holder. Name was escaping me. And what I'm going to do, I don't know where my screwdriver is. I'm gonna take the pieces apart because it does unscrew and it's gonna be definitely easier. I left this raised, but still attached because it'll be easier to dry it, I can stand that up somewhere. But what we're going to do is open the vintage mint. So let's just shake it up a little bit. And then let's get that open. I haven't opened this yet, so I don't know what it, what it looks like live. Oh, very pretty book. So, definitely needs a little bit more stirring though. What I, what I like about this as well is that this is not um, the same color as like the mint chip in the um, DIY clay based paint line so it's it's adding it's adding new colors to the repertoire so what I'm gonna do is get one solid coat on this is going to need two coats as well but we'll get two coats of paint on this and uh, check out the color and check out its adhesion to metal. So now let's add a little bit of something to this guy because it's just very white, very white. So I'm gonna give a little bit of some touch-ups in gray skies, just to give it a bit of a contrast, right? Already, that kind of gives it a little bit of color, a little bit uh, to just kind of distinguish it out. And probably this box and the ledge. So um, here we'll add some lettering, but I'll do the box and I'll do the ledge and that'll kind of balance out the gray. For this one, which has the glass dome, I just wanted to do something a little bit cheerful and bright. So I have the lemons transfer from 
IOD. And I thought putting some, you know, bright yellow lemons on here would just be kind of cheerful and you know, just kind of sunny. Maybe because it's been raining so much here that I just feel the need for something sunny. But uh, let me cut out. So I'm going to probably layer these a little bit. Maybe keep them within a circle. first one that I'm looking for is this guy. I'm going to look for my little tool. So you always get the little plastic tool in the kit. And I'm just going to take this curve of the leaf and the lemon up here. And my assumption is that these should transfer very easily onto here because it's fully dry. It's had the chance to dry overnight and it's already got that sealer. It's all slightly, slightly slick. I mean, these dry to kind of a bit of a, of a, I'm gonna say really low gloss, kind of um, not quite matte because there's a little bit of a sheen. So maybe kind of like a satin finish. But because it's sealed, I'm thinking that the transfers should stick very easily. And yep. Yeah. yeah, I hardly had to rub that at all, really. So let's just burnish it on. And just kind of see about maybe adding. And then this leaf is missing the little end, so we'll just have it coming out at the top. Looks like it's coming out from behind the lemon. And it creates a nice little cheerful somewhere, somewhere here. I have the top. Here it is. Buried underneath things. So look how cheerful that looks. Now, the one thing that I will do, all the piece is sealed, except now I've put the transfers on and that is not sealed. So the only thing that I'm going to do, I'll probably do it off camera, is I'll just add on, add on my top coat, just to protect my transfer a little bit. So I'll use the big top, let it dry, and then this one's done. And definitely looks a lot more cheerful and bright than the old wood did. This one, <laughs> moving all my garbage. This one, um, we've got our, our gray down. And you can see that this paint darkens as it dries. So the DIY paint lightens as it dries and then darkens when we add our top coat sealer on. This one darkens, it goes on lighter. So what we are looking at doing to this one is we wanted to try doing a little bit of distressing back to this. So we are going to add, which paintbrush? This guy. We are going to paint the outside of it with our white. So we're just using again that cottage color, white linen, and this is going to take a couple of coats because I can see that dark gray through the white. But, hmm, okay. What if instead of distressing, we get this on and while it's wet, we wipe it back for a whitewash effect. Okay, let's try it. Okay, I'm grabbing the cloth. That one's too dirty. Let me try this one. Okay. 
So we need to do this while it's wet because it's not going to move afterward. Okay, I like that. Especially in all those grooves. So we're just wiping it back as it's still wet to create that whitewashed effect. Oh, that's awesome. And the nice thing is that's got sealer in it. So we're done. So difference with it, just solid and then whitewashed. Okay. I like that. And that's kind of an awesome look. All right. So whitewashing with it. Great. The only difference is, I mean, this is easy because I'm, I'm working on a small project and a small surface. If you're doing a bigger surface, um, you know, you're doing a big dresser with this, you're going to have to work in small sections, right? You're going to have to wipe it back while this is still wet um, because once it's solid, you're into having to sand or, or something to be able to get through that coat. But wiping that back, that looks great. Okay, I love that look. All right, I'm gonna carry on with this then. I like the whitewash effect of that paint so much that I'm gonna try it just on this wood dowel. So this is this is the dowel from our um, paper towel dispenser. So we've got the mint green on there. And now let's start and see about kind of whitewashing the wood because it's it just seemed a little stark and just that white drifting over it kind of softens it I, I'm, I'm digging that I like that okay so we're just going to finish off the dowel it's just paler Awesome, I like that. Good choice. <laughs> to finish off this box, which is just, I gotta tell you, I love that gray with the white wash on it. That's really nice. I'm loving that. Um, but I just decided it needed a little something. So what I have is the really old um, classic pots transfer from IOD, now it comes in a pad. But I just took one and I just kind of cut it apart so that I just had little pieces of it that would work. And I'm just gonna put this small little kind of rose label down here on the bottom. And you know, I just whitewashed this maybe five minutes ago. So super thin layer, dried pretty fast, and um, the transfer sticking already. Except for the little tiny bits that I didn't get. One. Awesome. So see that just kind of picks that up a little bit. And then there was the the label Le Jardin um, that I'm just going to put across the top. Okay, super cute. So this one's done. So this is two done. This and this, this is just drying. It's got the top coat on, so it's just drying. This one's done. And we actually have one other one done, just not assembled. So I think for this one, that whitewashing of our stand really kind of made it because it's just a much nicer, nicer look with that vintage mint color. And the little screw going up here. And then this guy's done. We know that I like the whitewashed look, 
but I'm gonna try, rather than doing it with the paint, I'm gonna do it with the white wax. Because this is a slightly slicker surface, I want to see how the white wax kind of sticks in and how it works. I'm thinking that I'm just gonna have to be a little bit more cautious as I'm distressing, but I have to be a little bit more conscious of it as I'm, as I'm wiping back so that I don't wipe it back from everything, right? Um, but the wax, once it cures, is going to be a finished surface just the same as this painted surface is. So again, just the same as with the whitewashing effect of the paint, of the white over top, we're just gonna take a dry cloth and we're gonna wipe back that white wax, and I'm just using DIY white wax. Just to create a little bit of texture, get that paint sitting in some of those details. I mean, get the wax sitting in those details, sorry. So that we create a little bit more interest. Okay, so I think on the, the balls, I'm gonna have to do a little more conscientious, just rubbing down on the highs. see how that goes. Yeah. So look at the difference from top to bottom, right? You can see how much this has softened the look. It's brought out some of the details that would have been lost otherwise. So this is what I'm doing to all three of them, making a match, and then these guys are done. For these little canisters, what you see me doing is taking some dark wax, which is the brown, and lightly putting a little bit onto my brush, and I have a little bit of clear wax there too. I'm going around the edges of those haint blue canisters that had our animals on. And in particular, I'm outlining all of the animals and some of the details on them with that mix so they stand out a little bit more. And then here you see me going around all of the edges on the lid and on the canister itself, just adding a little bit of the detailing in the corners. Our little birdhouse needs more. And what I thought that I would do, since we're kind of in the spirit of experimenting, is do two other techniques on it to see how that works on this paint. So we're gonna use some paint inlays, maybe do this up and around the house, and we're gonna do some reverse image graphics down here for our words. So what this says when you look at it this way is going to the birds. So it's the mirror image. What I do to be able to make that work is you create the image, I do it in PowerPoint, I save it as a picture, and then when I open it as a picture, I can, you can either tell it to flip horizontal and that will flip it, or you can tell it to um, print and mirror image. One of the two is likely to work on your computer and your system. You can do the same in, in Word as well. It's just easier for me in PowerPoint. And then just size it to the size that you need. Now, here's the thing with the reverse imaging is that there's always a halo kind of from it, right? You can't get 100% of the paper off, so there's always a bit of a kind of a halo. So I like to cut it fairly close to my words just so that I minimize that a bit. That's just a personal thing. It's the 
part that drives me crazy about this technique. But the nice thing about both these techniques is that we're going to be using, um, we're going to be putting them into a top coat. So we're attaching them the same way. So this is actually um, paint inlay from, from IOD. This is uh, a used one. So I've already done a whole practice board with this one. Uh, and this is just leftover paint. So this is going into the second use of it. And so I'm just kind of cutting off some elements that will allow me to add them in. So I want to get around my little bird perch. So so all you want to do is trim them down to size. Now they have this um, so I call it seam, border. <laughs> On fabric, it'd be a seam. Uh, border around them. So you just want to cut off the border so that here I can get it right out to the edge. Right? And then I'm going to want some on the other side and maybe this little guy coming down from the top. My goodness. Okay, so you're going to take now you can use a top coat of your choice. I'm using Big Top. You can also do this with Liquid Patina. I just happen to have this out because I was sealing the other transfer. So, you know, I'm just going with what I had. Let me do this so I sort of get it centered. So with this, you're just going to reverse image it. You're going to put your decoupage medium. It works with Mod Podge as well. So whatever your preference is. Um, and then you're going to sit your words down into that liquid medium. You are not going to seal the top. So it's not like decoupaging. If you seal the top, you're not going to get your paper off. So we're going to let that sit down in there and let it dry. Now here, you wanted to get that little leaf in first. So let's get him down. And then we'll get this side on. So what we're doing with the inlay is we want this paint that's on this page to have something to activate have something to sit down into. And so our hope is that when we remove the paper backing, that it leaves the paint behind that has adhered to our liquid medium, whether it's our paint or whether in this case it's our top coat. So I have some water on my sponge and I'm just going to get that paper wet. So I'm kind of activating that paint and hopefully getting it embedded down into that top coat. And then I let both of them dry. And then I'll come back at you with this one. All right. Out of all of our projects, my cow has been the problem child. Um, so you can kind of see maybe, I'm not sure if you can see that there's a little bit more texture. He was a super slick surface. And when I went to put the second coat on, the first surface kind of slid a little bit. And I don't know if it's because the paint hadn't really adhered or if it's because it was totally dry to the touch, but it wasn't dry enough for it to have adhered. So needless to say, I don't like them. <laughs> There's probably a better way to say that, but it means I don't like the surface of it and he doesn't have enough surface for me to do a treatment like the whitewashing and make it look cute. And I have some rough areas that I wanna hide. So what I am thinking is that I'm gonna put some transfers on him 
And what I thought, because I have a lot of leftover leaves and greenery and stuff, that maybe he'd be cool with just greenery added on. So that he's like in, in the woods. He's got lots of greenery all over. So that's my plan, is that I'm just going to take these transfers and I'm gonna stick them all over. So just the same, taking my transfer tool, figuring out where the heck to put them <laughs> and then rubbing them on. I'm thinking this big fern goes up here. Now he's a curved surface, so it's gonna be a little bit trickier, but not impossible. So, and it uses up a lot of leftover pieces. So, bonus, there's a plan. So on something like this, just start in one spot and get it detaching there and then start working your way elsewhere. So he's going to take a fair bit of, fair bit of planning and piecing things together, but uh, you know, just work slowly and steadily. And then we'll start coming together. We are in the final stages of our projects. Um, ooh, he's wet, but this is how our cow turned out. Um, so he's just wet because I put on big top to seal the transfers and he's just sitting off to the side, but we got to get back to this guy. So, we're going to, this is just water with a sponge, and we're just going to wet our paper. And you can see that our letters look in the right direction, although now I'm looking at what you guys see and seeing if that actually is true. So to do this, what we want to do is we need to get all of the paper off. And to do that, we have to just rub really gently, not get it too wet. I took off too much of the tea because I was a little too wet over there. And I really haven't let this dry overnight, which is what it should do. So I'm just kind of going at it gentle but we just keep rolling and you get all the little pieces of paper off. You can go harder where it's just the white, but go gently over top of where the printing is because we wanna leave the ink behind, but we wanna take the paper off. And if it dries a little bit too much, you can just dampen it slightly to be able to get that off. And once it's all off, let it dry and then seal it because the ink won't have, have won't be sealed. So I'll just keep doing this to be able to get all of the paper off and then I will take my big top and seal it. Now this, isn't fully dry yet either, but we're gonna, we're gonna do it anyway. Because, um, you know, I'm sitting here in the shop and I'm wanting to see. So, um, we wanna get the paper damp again so that it will release. And I've got a couple of little awkward spots here. So, I want the paper to get a little bit damp, let it sit for about, you know, 30, 40 seconds or so. And then we'll be peeling that off. And I will say this on, when it comes to the reverse transfer, I have an inkjet printer here and I much, pr and, and a laser jet at home. So usually I will do the laser jetting at home and then bring it in, which I didn't do. 
Just, I prefer the laser jet. Okay, so we're getting something now. This is, recognize that this is um, the second use of this inlay, which means um, I should not get as strong an image. It should be much more faded than the first time because it has less paint left on it. But for little projects like this, that's perfect. So you get that kind of worn, cottagey kind of look to that. Okay, I'm just going to slowly get the rest of my paper off here and then let this dry before I seal it. Our projects are done. And let's kind of go through them one by one a little bit because the idea with today's video, as much as it was a thrift flip video, so I needed to get things painted and ready for the shop, was I also wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to check out how the new uh, Cottage Colors paint from DIY, the Jamie Ray Vintage line, performed. And it kind of gave me a good opportunity to be able to check that out on multiple surfaces with different kinds of finishes and different techniques to be able to see how it was going to do. And um, so kind of let's go through that. This little project you recall was like a dark um, finished wood. I didn't sand it before painting the paint stuck wonderfully. I didn't need to prep it. I mean, clean it, obviously. Um, and then we applied the transfers. Transfers went on lickety split. There was no issue with the transfer sticking. It already had that top coat built in, so it was able to adhere. And so much cuter than in the dark brown. We also did our little um, kind of old rough barn wood sort of um, piece. And again, paint went on really well, even on uh, surfaces that weren't smooth, that kind of freshened it up. This was so much easier because I didn't have to go over and seal it. The inlays, went on just fine. I mean, this is a distressed kind of look of the inlay because it was a multi-use one already. It wasn't brand new. And I was able to do the reverse decoupaging just fine on this as well. So super cute little addition. So that all worked. I was really excited to see um, how the white wax went on. And as much as it's a a slicker surface, again, not a problem with using the white wax, getting it to stay down into the surfaces. And this gray skies with the white wax, softening it just looks super good. I mean, we've got some spots where I've got a little bit of the gold peeking through and I love that. I think um, here as well, we did our two big canisters still kind of tough to see. I should have the little piece of paper. Let me let me stick that in so you can you can kind of see the the look of this. But this is is showing a little bit of that that stamp on there. I mean you can feel it it it's raised but the paint stuck on to the glass just fine. So Stem, stenciling on there with um, with any of the paint worked great. I do think that I could take a knife and scrape off the paint. So much the same as I've done on a lot of furniture refinishing that has um, the etching right, that, that etching that's on there, I'd be able to hand wash these and not lose the paint, but if I wanted to, I could scrape it off using a knife, which is fine, which is fine. That's the same as any etching powder. We used the Vintage Mint on this piece, 
and I really love the color and I really like the effect of that white wash. So we painted this in the vintage linen, the white, and then wiped it back and we got that kind of um, pickled whitewashed look on the natural wood. And it's, it's lovely because it's all sealed and that looks great. That was a perfect idea. And we got that idea from doing it over this little potted, this little uh, potting box. We painted in the gray skies, but then we put the white over top and then wiped it back right away. This is gonna seal up very quickly, so you have to work in, in small surface areas. I did one side at a time, but stayed down in the lows, gave that pickled kind of look, that whitewashed look. We added a little bit of a transfer. We know it loves to stick, and I think it turned out super cute. So that worked great. We did some molds on as well. And again, like anything, they stick on just great. They look really good. The paint adhered to them, no problem. And that really picked up the look of these canisters. I think that's really adorable. I love those molds. Those animal molds, that's awesome. Um, and let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, didn't I have eight? Eight was the thing. Last one was this guy. Now, super slick surface. And I think I mentioned to you guys that um, I think I had to wait longer on a super slick surface for the paint to dry. I, I kind of, it was sort of dried to the touch and I went to put on the second coat and I was starting to shift some of the undercoat. It started to slip a little bit. I think if I had waited overnight on the slick surface, let it harden and then applied, it wouldn't have been a problem. But um, it led me to apply the transfers to it, which went on no problem. It loves the sealed surface. And I actually really love him with those transfers on. So that worked out great because I love this. I love him now. He was my least favorite and now I love him. So that worked out great too. So overall, um, I, I'm really loving and enjoying the paint. I think that there's a lot that you can do with this. And I think that perhaps on another project, what I'll do is I will combine the use of this with maybe some of the milk paint or with some of the DIY, or maybe I'll do two different pieces and, and combine them for both and we'll see how they go. So we can definitely use them as undercoats with other paints on top. And that gives you the opportunity to distress back or for it to chip back to these colors rather than um, maybe the underlying natural wood. So you can get that kind of two-toned effect. Let me know what you think about these guys. Certainly, if you are looking to try out the paint, check out the website, queenbeecreationshome.com or one of your local distributors. Um, if I'm not uh, particularly close to you, I'd love to hear what you think about some of the finishes um, with this. Hope it gave you some ideas and I hope you tune in next time. Until then, take care. Thank you.